Hi, my name's Martin, Martin O'Hanlon. I run a blog called StuffAboutCode.com, and um, the, only pe the only time anybody wants to talk to me is about Minecraft, because I wrote little programs, and you know, I'm not going to apologize for not being a teacher. I'm glad I'm not a teacher. Sounds like a horrible <laughs> job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think what I can do is show you kind of some kind of fun stuff. And I like fun stuff. But anyway, all good presentations start with a bit of a quiz. Simple one. And this, this is where we found it. Who's the artist? You can have a dance if you want. Come on. Need a Simone, I don't know, yeah, well done guys. I wanted to show you what's potentially possible by using the Pi in Minecraft before we actually start talking about it. Yeah, because we're going to get into some stuff. It's going to be, yeah, what's Minecraft stuff like? It's a music analyzer. It's a gra do you remember them from the 80s? Graphic Equalizer. Yeah, it's doing it in real time. So anyway, let's move on and we'll do some... So, first of all, What's Minecraft? The people that here that have kind of like li been living in, in a bubble, particularly if you know young people, if you don't know what Minecraft is, it is a game. Yeah, it's a game. It's meant to be fun. It's a game. Um, my friend introduced me to Minecraft because we had a uh, conversation one night about square moons. And, he, and I said, you don't get square moons. And he said, you're doing Minecraft. And I went, what's Minecraft? Uh, this is how I get into Minecraft. It is monumentally successful. You know. Uh, it's difficult to get numbers, but 30, 40 million copies across all, all the platforms. Um, it's written by, well, started off written by one guy, a guy called, uh, he calls himself Notch, Mike, M Marcus Pearson. Yeah, he had an idea, he wanted to create an indie game, he made it himself, yeah, and he built a massive company on the back of it, yeah, from this one game. But it's meant to be fun, yeah. So, and it's creative more than anything. So you've got this big world, massive world, and it's all made of blocks, different types of blocks. You get blocks that are earth, blocks that are wood, blocks that are sky, you know, air, yeah, blocks that are water. Everything's made of blocks, different sized blocks, big blocks, small blocks, yeah, yeah, but everything's made out of blocks. And they're meant to be kind of typically about a metre square. So as you kind of stand in this world, if you put two, you can't really see over the top of them. Yeah, so they're kind of about a metre square. Yeah, everything's made out of blocks. The whole world is made out of blocks. And the good thing about these blocks is you can take different blocks and kind of make them, put them together and make different things out of blocks. So if you take a wood block and a metal block and you can kind of put them together. Um, so it's predominantly about building an adventure. Okay, so there's kind of two aspects to this game. The first one is, is building, yeah. Uh, but the second one's adventure. So if you kind of put yourself in, I don't know, hypothetical situation, you're a man and suddenly you appear in this world that's all made out, out of blocks and you've got nothing. Yeah? But the problem is, every night, when it gets dark, things come out and try and get you. Yeah? So your first job when you arrive in this world with nothing yeah, is to try and survive one night. Yeah? So you, you go, right, OK, I've got nothing. I say, well, I'm going to use my fits, and I'm going to break down a tree. And then I'll use that tree, and I'll then take that bit of wood, and I'll make it into planks. And I'll take that bit of wood, now, and I'll take some of those planks, and I'll make them to sticks. And then if I t put my sticks and some wood together, I can make a pickaxe. Now, with my pickaxe, I can then go go and get stone. And actually, with stone, I can then make a better pickaxe. Kind of get the idea. It rolls on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of moves into this kind of building thing. Because the first thing you need to do is, if you're going to survive overnight, you've got to make yourself a house or something, a hole in the ground. doesn't matter what it is. Yeah? But it, you know, you've got to make yourself something. But it just goes on and on and on and on. And people have made the most fantastic things in Minecraft. Huge things, but also very complex things. You get this stuff called redstone, which you can create circuits with, rudimentary circuits with. And actually, you can create gates with it as well. Now, for the kind of uh, computer scientists among you, you know, if you can make a knot gate, you can make any other gate. And actually, if you can make a knot gate, you make any other gate, you can make any sort of logic circuit. And go, so there's guys that have built whole computers using redstone. Yeah just by creating all these gates together. So it's also a very social game. So it's a multiplayer game. You have servers, you have huge servers. Um, I, I'm a, a, a big advocate of a, of a server called Autcraft, which is particularly for children who have autism. Yeah, and actually, it's a really safe way for them to get together in something that they enjoy and, really, and like and to socialize with people. It's a very social game. So Minecraft on the Pi. There are two really great things about Minecraft on the Pi. First of all, it's free. Yeah? 
You don't get that with any other version, so we like that. Yeah? And the second one is it's got an API. Okay? So an application programmer's interface. Yeah? And this is really what sets this thing apart. And this is what really allows you to engage with, uh, engage with people and actually make it something more than just Minecraft. Okay, so this API, uh, you, can, you, can do, you, can, you can do a few things with it, but there's four really important things you can do with it. And actually with those four things, you can uh, kind of create the most fantastic things. Yeah. So you can do four things. You can find out what a block is. So if you give it some coordinates in this world, so it's a big three-dimensional world, so everything's got an X, a Y, which is up, and a Z. Yeah. If you give it a coordinate in this world, you know, like 1, 2, minus 5, and say, tell me what block's there, it'll tell you what it is. Yeah? But then you can actually change that block and say, actually, I don't want that to be stone, I want it to be air, or I want it to be water. Yeah? You can change it any to anything. You can also work with the guy, Steve. Yeah? I, I have no idea why he's called Steve, but he's just universally known as Steve. Yeah? So you can work with Steve. And what you can do with Steve is you can find out where Steve is, and say, you know, tell me where he is. And it will give you that set of coordinates, you know, where he is in this world. But you can also change where he is. Yeah. Um, so you've got four really simple but very powerful things. Yeah. So what I wanted to try and do is just kind of give you guys a, a kind of feel in terms of what stuff you can do. Yeah? All right. So I talked about when you arrive in Minecraft, your first job is you've got to make a house. Right? Now, why build a house when you can code a house? Ta -da! A, I know it's a pretty rubbish house, but it's a house. Okay. Now the best thing about, create, create, about coding something is you can run it again. So if you've got one house and you need another house for your mate, you run it again and you suddenly you've got two houses. Okay? But then you can start thinking, well, do you know what? If I start introducing things like loops into this, yeah, I don't just have to create one house and one for my mate. I can create a town of houses. Yeah. The only limit being how big your for loop is, yeah? So I'll create a whole town of houses. But then you think, well, do you know what? I don't really want a town of houses. What I actually want is I just want one really good house, yeah? Now, the best thing I think about a really good house in Minecraft yeah, is, is, is it still looks like this, because I just want somewhere to stay where the, the mobs aren't going to get me. But actually, I'm going to start roaming around, yeah? What I really want is a house that it doesn't matter where I've gone, it's always just behind me. Yeah? <laughs> you know, so, so like I say, it doesn't matter where I go, I've got, oh crikey, I've got to wander off here. Oh crikey, it's getting dark, I've even got to walk miles back to where I was. My house is just behind me. Yeah. But all I've done is use those four really simple things. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, where am I? Where have I been? I've put a house just behind me. Yeah? But again, I'm using the same piece of code. So you start to introduce that kind of concept of, you know, for loops and if statements. But then you think, well, do you know what? I can make really cool things, you know, like windmills. Yeah? But windmills that actually work and the sales go round. Yeah? But if you actually think about what I'm doing here in this, in this piece of code, is, is that actually I've started to introduce things like trigonometry and mathematics and actually kind of work out the lines and the kind of angles around where this windmill goes. And Trigonometry and mathematics is really important to kind of 3D graphics. But then you think, oh, you know, you, you need, also need other things. So, you know, what about a bridge that automatically appears in front of your feet as you walk, as you walk along? So, you know, it doesn't matter where you go, you've always got a bridge. Yeah. So, again, all I'm doing is going saying, okay, well, where was I? Where am I going to be? And I'll, put, I'll tell you what, I'll put a block in front of me. And then I can walk across huge chasms. Yeah. But yeah, there's all stuff that's very nice and good, but tell you what people always love is blowing stuff up. So uh, I, you know, you then, but then you can make cannons. Yeah. Yeah. So what I've started to do here is, is I've made a little cannon that I can sort of program my cannon and go, right, rotate 180 degrees, tilt up 10 degrees, fire. And it sends a block out and it goes, da -da 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 bang. Yeah. We like blowing stuff up. But then you can make games. I love the concept of a game in a game. Yeah. So I had an old Nokia mobile phone. It's probably the first phone I ever owned. So just, you remember Snake? Snake in Minecraft. Yeah. I love the concept of a game in a game. Yeah. And actually, it's, 
that's when you start to actually sort of really sort of press it and say, do you know what? You know, these four very simple things, I've created something that's really complicated. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, it's not a huge stretch. You know, once you've created one block, once you've created two blocks, once you know where, know where the player is, it's then just about, you know, more and more and more and more and more and building on that. So I wanted to give you that kind of, that kind of view in terms of the stuff you can do with very simple things. But why? Why, why, why do this crazy stuff? Because right? it's a hook. You see what I've done there? Yeah? It's a hook. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a hook. Yeah. It gets people interested in something they're probably already interested in. Yeah, it says, do you know what? You love that playing that Minecraft game? You know, I oh, know, I oh, know it's a I know it's a pain having to create a house every time. I tell you what, let's code your house. Yeah, and actually then then we'll get a house that follows you. Or then we'll get a house that actually, you know, every time you run out of space it adds another floor on. Or adds another floor on or another floor and it gets a bit bigger. Yeah. It's a hook. And that's what it should be used for. It shouldn't be used as this kind of like, you know, yeah, play this game, it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, actually, you're already playing the game. Yeah? Let's see what else we can do with it. Okay. So, I think it is a hook. And there's a great guy. He's a mate of mine. He's called Nicholas Harris. Uh, he lives in the States. He, he writes his own little website now uh, called scarabcoder.com. Now, Nicholas is 12 years old. Okay? And I want to show you some of the stuff that Nick did. So Nick started off right at the start, and he went, and he, uh, I, was, I was on a family holiday about a year ago, actually. And he starts, he starts emailing me, going, Martin, I'm a bit stuck on this, I'm a bit stuck on this, I'm a bit stuck on this, and I consequently annoy my wife by reading emails by the pool, but yeah, uh, I'm a bit stuck on this. And I just gave him a few pointers and a few hand, hands. So this is the stuff that Nicholas then took on. So one of the first things Nicholas showed me to him, I was absolutely amazed by this was, now I told you about games in games. This guy had written two games, right? The, this is the first one, right? And it, you, you, you kind of stood in this room and you, the, kind of, uh, the floor comes towards you, you've got to avoid it, yeah? But then he wrote this other game where the floor disappears, yeah? And as the floor disappears, you've got to try and stay out of the way, and, yeah, yeah. But what I love about this is not the fact that he coded two games, yeah? They're original ideas, yeah? These aren't two games, you know, I, 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 I recreate Snake, well done me technical expert, not particularly creative, yeah? But he created his own, oh, hang on, I need to zip back then. Moving on from that, um, this guy Nicholas wrote a book. Yeah. He was 12 years old, I mean, it's a little e-book, it's only about 30 odd pages long, you buy it on Amazon, it costs you 79p, yeah? But he wrote a little book, yeah? I, it's not gonna make him a millionaire, yeah? But at the age of 12, he wrote a book, yeah? And he wrote that book because he'd learnt something and he wanted to share it, yeah? So he wrote a little book. Um, and the bit that we missed that was just gone skip, skip past um, was he took that forward when he kind of learned how to use Python a little bit, kind of a little bit in Minecraft and stuff like this, which is pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. He took it on and then he started to write more complex stuff and actually started to interact with the GPIO. Yeah. So he made himself this little kind of like combination lock. Yeah. Again, it's that hook to get somebody started. <laughs> So that was the only thing I wanted to leave you guys with was that hook. And if the, if, you know, the vision of me with a fishing rod does it for you here, yeah? whatever you take away, take away that hook. Yeah, something to get somebody engaged. So if you want to find out more stuff, go to these sites. They're all great. The fourth one down is particularly good. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't tell you anything that's educationally valuable, but if you want to look at good, fun stuff, yeah, that's where I come in. All right. So, Thank you all very much for listening to me. I'll be wandering about. You'll notice me because I've got a rucksack with a helmet strapped to the back of it. I'll tell you about that as well. Um, thank you all.